My name is Carrie Cottle, and welcome to Read Aloud with Ms. Cottle. Our book today is about a real-life superhero, Malala Yousafzai. Enjoy Malala's Magic Pencil, written by Malala herself and illustrated by Kara Squet, and published by Little Brown and Company. Enjoy. Malala's Magic Pencil by Malala Yousafzai, illustrated by Kara Squet. Malala's Magic Pencil, published by Little Brown and Company. Do you believe in magic? When I was younger, I used to watch a TV show about a boy who had a magic pencil. If he was hungry, he drew a bowl of curry and it appeared. If he and his friends were in danger, he drew a police officer. The boy was a little hero, always protecting people who needed help. How I wanted a magic pencil too. If I had a magic pencil, I would use it to put a lock on my door so my brothers couldn't bother me. Stop time so I could sleep an extra hour every morning. Erase the smell of the trash dump near our house. And I would use it to make other people happy. I would draw the most beautiful dresses in the world for my mother, the best buildings in the valley for my father so he could open many schools where children would study for free. A proper ball, so my brothers and I no longer had to play with an old sock stuffed with rubbish. Every night before I went to bed, I wished for a magic pencil of my own. And every morning, I would wake up and check my cupboard, but the magic pencil was never there. One day I was throwing away potato peels and eggshells at the dump. I was wrinkling my nose, swatting away flies and making sure I didn't step on anything dirty in my nice shoes. When I saw a girl about my age sorting trash into piles. Nearby, boys were fishing for metal scraps using magnets on strings. When my father returned home from work, I told him what I'd seen. It made him sad. Abba, I said. Yes, Johnny, he said back. I always liked when he called me dear one. Why haven't I seen that girl in my class? Because, he said, but he didn't finish right away. Because, Johnny, our country, in our country, not everyone sends their daughters to school and some children must work to support their family. Those boys will sell the metal scraps they find. If they went to school, their families would go hungry. School was my favorite place, but I never considered myself lucky to be able to go. My father had always said, Malala will live free as a bird. Now I wondered how free I'd truly be. That night, I thought about families who didn't have enough food and the girl who couldn't go to school, and even about how when I was older, I would be expected to cook and clean for my brothers because where I came from, many girls weren't allowed to become what they dreamed of. I knew then that if I had the magic pencil, I would use it to draw a better world, a peaceful world. First, I would erase war, poverty, and hunger. Then I would draw girls and boys together as equals. Over the next few years, instead of wishing for a magic pencil every night, I worked hard in school every day I wanted to be one of the top students in my class.
but soon powerful and dangerous men declared that girls were forbidden from attending school. They walked the streets of our city now. They carried weapons. One by one, girls stopped coming to school. Abba, where are all the students? They don't feel safe here anymore, Johnny. How could a few men stop all the girls in our valley from going to school? If more people knew what was happening to us, I thought, they might help. Wishing wasn't enough. Someone needed to speak out. Why not me? I wrote about what it felt like to be scared to walk to school and how some of my friends had moved away because of the threat they faced in our city. I wrote about how much I loved school and how proud I was of my uniform. Once I started writing, I couldn't, I didn't stop. I wrote speeches and traveled around my country sharing my story. I even talked to a reporter from a famous international newspaper. People actually wanted to learn about my life. I spoke for all the girls in my valley who couldn't speak for themselves. My voice became so powerful that the dangerous men tried to silence me, but they failed. And now my voice is louder than ever, louder because people have joined me and together we make a chorus, standing up for what we believe. We raise our voices for those in need help people in danger, even if they are an ocean away. Think of the world as a family. Do you still believe in magic? I do. I wrote alone in my room, but people all over the world were reading my story. Millions now know, now know it and help me spread my message of hope. I had at last found the magic I was looking for in my words and in my work. I am Malala. I've always wished I could make the world a more peaceful place. And every day I work to make my wish come true. One child, one teacher, one book, and one pen can change the world. Dear friend, as a child, I used to watch a TV show called Shakalaka Boom Boom. It was about a boy named Sanju who could make anything real by drawing it with a magic pencil he found. Sanju and his friends were always getting into trouble and the magic pencil would help them get out of it. But my early childhood was mostly trouble free. I grew up in the beautiful Swat Valley in north northwest Pakistan, the sister of two cheeky little brothers and the only daughter of a resilient mother and inspiring father who was a school principal. Trouble came to my valley when I was 10 years old and girls were forbidden from going to school. At first I thought, what can I do? I'm just a child. As I watched my father speak out for girls' education, I realized that I had a voice too, and I wanted to use it. I believed then, as I believe now, that all children should have access to education. When we are young, we feel powerless. We rely on adults to do the serious work. However, when real danger threatened my right to go to school, I felt stronger than ever, and I found power in my voice. Once, I wished for Shan Sanju's magic pencil, now I know that when you find your voice, every pencil can be magic. I hope that my story inspires you to find the magic in your own life and to always speak up for what you believe in. Magic is everywhere in the world, in knowledge, beauty, love, peace. The magic is in you, in your words, in your voice. Malala. About Malala Yousafzai. 
Malala Yousafzai first came to public attention by writing for BBC Urdu about life under the Taliban using the pen name Ghul Makai. The Taliban had forbidden girls in her region from going to school. Soon she began to speak publicly about girls' education in her community. In October 2012, Malala was targeted by the Taliban and attacked as she was returning home from school. She miraculously survived. Malala and her family now live in Birmingham, England, and she travels the world speaking about the importance of education for all. In 2013, she started Malala Fund, which has op since opened schools for girls in Pakistan, as well as in Lebanon and Jordan for Syrian refugees. Of the over 130 million girls who are out of school, many are refugees. In recognition of her courage and advocacy, Malala was honored with the National Youth Peace Prize in Pakistan in 2011 and won both the International Children's Peace Prize and the Amnesty International Ambassador of Conscience Award in 2013. In 2014, she became the youngest ever recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize, shared with Indian children's activist Kailish Satyarti. In 2017, Malala became the youngest ever UN Messenger of Peace the special focus on girls' education. And there is Malala as a young child with her school trophies and with her family in Birmingham, England. Thank you, Malala. I hope you enjoyed Malala's Magic Pencil. I am inspired by this book and inspired by Malala herself, inspired to make a difference with those around me and speak up against injustice and for what is right. I hope that you use your voice and find the magic within yourself. Take care.